express the fraction 1 over 4 as a percentage. All right, before we uh, actually turn it into, into a percentage, I want to point out that 1 over 4, or any fraction, or sometimes they call these ratios, but any fraction could be written and can always be thought of as just being 1 divided by 4. So it's the top, the numerator, divided by the bottom, which is called the denominator. Now this makes it really easy if you have a calculator. So 1 divided by 4, if you type that in and you hit equals, you're going to get 0 0.25. Now this is what's referred to in your textbook as just being your decimal. And if you want to turn a decimal into a percentage, you multiply by 100 and then add a percent sign at, with your answer. So if I take my 0.25 and I multiply by 100, that's going to give me how much? That'll give me 25. Add the percent sign to my answer. And so my answer here for this question is 25%. Now, that's great if I have a calculator and you're going to have a calculator for your uh, for whatever quiz or test you have here however some of the questions in this uh, in this appendix are presented in a way that suggests you might not have a calculator so just in case you're doing that I'd like to show you how you would go through uh, with this part of things so if I had to do for example uh, division by hand the way you do division by hand let's say I had uh, something like five or no let's do um, 10 divided by five let's say that's my question well this is a nice easy question to do by hand you take the value you want to divide into and then this is going to be how I do my division I say that I'm going to figure out how many times does five go into 10 so the way I do this is I simply just work out how many times does 5 go into 10. If it does go in, I would put the amount of times up here. So 5 does go into 10, it goes in 2 times. Now let's see what that actually gives me. 2 times 5 is 10. And so that leaves a remainder of 0. If you get a remainder of zero, it means you're done, and so then that would mean that your answer is two. Now, that's nice and easy if I have something like five going into 10, but here we have kind of an odd question. We've got a large number, and we're trying to figure out how many times does it go into a smaller number? So the answer is it doesn't go into the smaller number any, uh, any, any uh, nice even number of times like I've got here. But what would I actually do? Let's say I have 1 and I want to see how many times does 4 go into 1. Well the answer like I said is it doesn't go in, it doesn't fit into 1, it's too big. So there's a way to solve this question. The answer isn't simply 0, but I would start off with 0 because 4 goes into 1 0 times. But what it's going to be, if you get a 0, put a decimal after this there's going to be some values here. The way I can figure out what these values are is I add a zero onto, or I tag a zero onto the one there. So now it's become a 10. You can do that if you put this decimal in. So I have now four going into 10. Well, four goes in one, two times into 10. So this is now 0 0.2. Take the 2, multiply it by 4, so if 4 goes in to 10 2 times, what is 2 times 4? Well, it's 8. That gives me a remainder of 2. What about 4 in, into 2? Well, it doesn't go into 2, but it, remember, I can add a 0 on. 4 does go into 20, and it goes in 5 times. What is 5 times 4? It's 20. This gives me a remainder of 0. That means I'm done. And so my answer is going to be 0 0.25. And then if I want a percentage, like they've asked me for, I multiply this by 100. And this gives me 25%. And so, of course, the answer is D.